Uh, how's the weather? It's snowing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cloudy and foggy here. And the weather is in the was in the 30s this morning. So yeah, yeah, it's snowing here. And we need the snow, though. We've been in a drought oh, for years. So we do, too. Desperate. You know, we, the big mountains that are north of us, 100 miles away, they generally have 500 inches of snow. They only had five feet. Oh, oh my that, God. Yeah, and it's bad. And uh, they had, that's where we, everybody gets their water from. Right. And here, because we live on that, everybody has a well system on the island where we live in. So we have no mountain streams or anything. So we get our water from the rain. So the winter is our rainy time. Yes. So we get our aquifers full. So it's oh. kind of hairy all over the country, environmentally anyway. Yeah, it seems to be. We're mm -hmm. hoping for more snow. We pray for snow constantly. Yeah, well, the people out here, they are supposed to get snow in the mountains. We can see them from where I live, my living room. They're 100 miles away. Yeah, but you can see them. Yeah, they're beautiful. And they're, uh, they're supposed to get snow tonight, I believe, up there in the mountains. So. Oh, good. Yeah, we're right in the foothills. We, you know, we can see them and we can drive to them in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, right. That's, I like that. <laughs> see them, so. I love the mountains. Uh, from our house, we see the oh, part of the ocean. And uh, that's the, the Pacific Ocean. It's called Puget Sound. And the mountains. So I can get away without seeing the water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love the mountains, so. I do too. I moved away once and boy, when I came back for a visit, as soon as I saw the mountains, I started crying. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'm feeling yeah. so homesick. No. It makes that sense. Was I don't know what it is. It's uh, people are water people and people are not. Yeah. Even though, you know, I, I spent a lot of time on lakes and not around the ocean, but so. Uh, right. Oh, I've taken couple of cruises and that's not living on the water. Mm -hmm. so. I think it'd be fun, but I don't know. I would worry about tsunamis. <laughs> well, we're high up uh, on our island and it would really have to be extraordinary for it to get as high as we live. But we oh, have that's... three levels down below us that are down in the water, four levels below, they would be wiped out. Oh, but you wouldn't, okay. That's mm -hmm. good then. And then there we have what they call high bank dwellings. The banks washed out and the houses go down. <gasps> yes, so yes. We're I see the point. Oh. Yeah, on the water edge. So. Okay, I guess we probably. Okay, it's 353 according to my watch. Yeah, we're going good. Okay. So. Had any inquiries or anything? Um. Your friend is not going to be able to come today because she's sick, but she's planning to come next time. Okay. And she realized that it's, it's for uh, answering questions and discussion? Yeah. Yes. I well, explained she, the whole... She runs her own workshops. And uh, she's always been after me to come and take them, but I, I don't want to go. <laughs> you don't want to go off island, do you? No, uh, but no, I, I, I feel I know more than she does. No, oh. <laughs> okay, because I, of my own experience. Uh -huh. And then that's not putting her down. What she does is very good. Yeah, it's not what I would be needing to go to her for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, okay, I've been, so I've been at you, it for a while. <laughs> it, for those of people who are listening and viewing this broadcast if you have any questions please uh, text them to 970 uh oh 921-9582. That's 970-921-9582. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Yes, <laughs> I've had so many phone numbers in my life, I can't keep track of them all. <laughs> I have about six or seven uh, for you on my index card. I know, I know. I'm going to ask but, later which ones are real. <laughs> this one is real, 970-921-9582. All right.
And uh, so today we're going to be talking about how to tell if your guides are trying to contact you. Spirit guides. Spirit guides. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I do is when I go into meditation is when they contact me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're trying to at other times or not. Yeah. How, well, how do you tell, Norm? <laughs> <laughs> I figured you were going to do that. <laughs> you yeah. knew I was. <laughs> well, there I have, I think there are about seven ways that you can figure out that they're trying to get in touch with you and then go into meditation to allow them to contact you. Maybe that might be where uh, one of the things is you'll see different colored lights. Well, there aren't any. Ah. Okay, and um, and they shift, okay, back and forth a little bit. And they may be around you or they may be shooting out um, as an indication that there is a, an effort on the part of your spirit guide to say hello or do something. I think mm -hmm. that's an important one. We ignore that, by the way. And the other one is my favorite. Well, one of my favorites. And that's feathers. Oh, fe would be fine feathers? Yes, you're walking on, and all of a sudden there's a feather. Uh, where did it come from? Or you step out your door, there's a feather. I collect feathers. And the birds are always leaving me little gifts. Oh. We provide them with water, you know, and that kind of thing. So I can walk down my driveway. No, that wasn't there when I went down, but it's there when I come up. Where did it come from? Uh -huh. delightful things like that so they're a sign that you're trying to be contacted I think anyway uh... oh I know one that I often think is a sign mm -hmm. if I see a penny on the ground I think okay. penny from heaven yes uh -huh. yeah and that's an oldie by the way that's a real old one uh, to talk about I think feathers are important because they come from different kinds of birds. Uh, we have eagle feathers, which we're not allowed to have because I'm not a Native American, okay? And that's okay. Uh, but we have other kinds of owl feathers, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of beautiful, orange thrust and robins and bluebirds and uh, blue jays. <laughs> so uh, we have all those available. And each one can have a separate meaning and their size and their cleaning. Uh, some of like the orange thrust feathers are just beautiful and warmth, et cetera, the color. I can, yeah, yeah I can tell you. Uh, also, uh, sometimes uh, a bird itself will become very prominent with you. Uh, it may uh, follow you down your driveway or out in your backyard and yell at you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I say to my wife, every time I go out the front door, the crows give me the business. <laughs> give my attention, you see. Uh, I'll tell you this little story. One of my friends, uh, as a former county commissioner and is now deceased, was at a meeting uh, at the little meeting place here on the island. And he was a smoker then. And uh, he had to step outside to smoke. He stepped out the door and pop, there fell a bird. Right, in, bird. Mm -hmm. and it was deceased, and uh, it was a, a blue herring. Wow, and, and that just shook him because all of a sudden he realized that bird was for him. Yes, that he had to know something, so he went ahead and tried to then calm himself down and so on. So, things like that happen when I leave my house or go out, I see eagles and they sort of follow me. Or I'm following them, and that's always a sign to me because that's my that's one of my uh, spirit animals, is that it is protecting me, and I feel secure and safe because they're a very powerful bird. Uh, crows are a, a very wise bird, for example, and that's a good sign for you. So that's two things: the colored lights, and then the feathers that you find by not looking for them, just accidentally wherever. You happen to be. And the other one is smell. Unexpected fragrances. Oh. Hmm. 
You know, all of a sudden, mm. you get a whiff of something that's sweet, uh, a little pungent maybe. Uh, it's there. Uh, it can be some of those smells you get in the wilderness because we live in the woods. So, you know, we're... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if that's we do too. So. <laughs> so you have all those. Um, you know, sometimes the smells are, are very amazing. Oh, where did that come from? You know, and uh, it's, it's refreshing. It's one of the things about going outdoors when you live in the woods. It, there are refreshing smells. Once in a while, a strange one will pump through. Oh, it might be a, a blossom on a tree somewhere that attacks your attention. Uh, it's also, by the way, a, a sort of a indication that maybe your angel wants to give you a little hug. Oh, <laughs> guide. Yeah, it's just a little thing like that. Um, you have to accept. It. We generally just we'll go on, forget it, you know, and we dismiss these things. But really, stop and realizing that it's an effort, you know, to do that. Um, that they're making. Yeah, they're making a. One of these things, um, and I have to be careful how I say this too, Julia, you hear things, you hear voices, and I'm you know, murmuring voices, they're not really clear to you, mm -hmm. maybe a little humming, you know, because mm -hmm. um, people go, oh, yeah, and that's not the case at all. Um, The universe is full of all kinds of sounds and huge vibrations. And so a murmuring voice could come from thousands and millions of miles away, maybe. We don't know that. That's a little difficult. So people get funny about hearing, they hear things. It's voices, uh, murmuring voices, not just sounds, you know. Uh, that'll be another thing <laughs> we'll talk about. Uh, so I think. Uh, we sometimes maybe wake up in the night and hear voices, you know, and so that's a little sign that you're trying to be contacted. What happens is we, we tune it out because hearing things is supposed to be a bad sign. You're sort of losing your marbles, you know, right. <laughs> that's not the case at all. Okay. So we need to say, okay, yeah, all right. Hello, what do you want? <laughs> you just say it like that? Yeah, sure. Hello. What do you want? What do you want to tell me? Um, it's just like I, I always believe that when you're dealing with the spirit world, you have to be polite and say, hello, welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice to meet you, kind of thing. Well, so, oh, hey, what do you want? <laughs> you're waking me up. How can I help you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, of course, what I think probably you're more familiar with is through dreams. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to the dream world, dreamland, and uh, you find images, you know, and uh, come to you. Uh, well, they most likely will be your spirit guides. Now, spirit guides can be animals and humans. Okay, so, uh, the human spirits, not just animals. I yeah. mentioned that, and maybe that people don't realize they can be humans. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a loved one. It can be a friend or someone you have not met before who's wanting to contact you for a reason, uh, particularly your world and what you've been doing for years, they may want to say something to you to have you do something, you know, some message for you personally. Right. Have to be careful that we don't just throw these things away and say, ah, you know, that's um, crazy. <laughs> Not like you know what I've been getting is songs. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the lines of a song will go through my head, mm -hmm. and they'll usually be uh, an answer to something that's been concerning me. Mm -hmm. hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Often what do you do? Songs you know what? I haven't thought of for years and years. Yeah, and what do you do about it? Um... <laughs> I use well. I usually go on the internet and look up the uh, lyrics to the and see what the message is. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have a a relative that lives in Slovakia, that borders the Ukraine, and uh, their daughter uh, had this voice keep coming to her, 
And so she copied down the words. And so she wasn't sure what it all meant. So I told her to go ahead and look at the words and look for each verb in the words, every verb. And uh -huh. put those verbs together and they are action. And it'll tell you whether you're getting an action or you should do an action. And when okay. they came all together, she was just thrilled with what the message was that she was supposed to do. So this is one of those things that maybe we forget to do that. This holds true for your dreams too, that if you have your dream, don't get up and suddenly write it down. You're not going to go back to sleep then. <laughs> you know, you broke the sleep path. But when you wake up in the morning, remember what you can of it and jot it down, not in detail, but some key words. Uh huh. And key look words. Yeah, you know, what those key words mean. Especially uh, action verbs. Yeah. So uh, I think those are those are good clues uh, as to what goes on. Um, Oh, this one fits for my wife. <laughs> she loves clouds and is always photographing them. And you know, you've seen some of her photographs, of course. Uh huh. She's uh -huh. a very good yeah. artist. So she she loves the shapes of clouds. You remember when you were a kid, you used to lay on your back looking at clouds and name what uh -huh. shape you see. Yeah. We do that in the car. She'll say, "Oh my goodness, look at this! Somebody flung, flung, flung around. I gotta stop. I gotta drive the car." <laughs> She loves getting the pictures of them, so she's always got cameras with her wherever we go. So cloud formations can also give you a little clue that if you take a particular shape that has been like a bird, a clown, uh, you know, anything, an animal, a building even sometimes, it looks like a balloon floating in the air, et cetera. So that, uh, oh, I think is, is a good one is to do that with cloud formations. Uh, you might even see wings. Uh, I put up a photograph of one of the moon settings she took on Facebook recently. And when you looked at it, I said, okay, what do you really see? Well, some people saw an angel. Other people saw the moon shape of the heart. Uh, it was just interesting how the different shapes they saw. Okay, this is all were positive. No negative, no threat from that. That was kind of a thing that I thought was very good. Um, There are books on dreams and dream symbols. I don't want to get into all that. But, um, I think one of the ones we forget also is an easy one. Um, a sudden change in temperature. You suddenly feel chilly. Mm -hmm. or you suddenly feel very warm. And uh, Or you feel a warm breeze around you or a cool breeze. That's generally an indication that there is a spirit in the world that wants to talk to you uh, and wants mm -hmm. to say hello. Even maybe just to say stop by. We're checking on you. Well, I think that's about the number of the ways. I don't know how many is that. Five or six, six or seven. That's quite a few. Uh, well, we've got that, colored lights, mm -hmm. smells, dreams, Keyword, oh, keywords in the dream, mm -hmm. cloud formations, feathers, mm -hmm. temperature, temperature, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, I thought of another one, murmuring. Oh yeah, temperature. Okay. Um, one of my Facebook friends does smudging smoke and asks what you see in the smoke. Oh. Good one, good one. I forgot all about that. Yes, it is. That's like um, my uh, great aunt used to do tea readings. Uh huh. Tea leaf readings. You look for the message in the tea leaves. Yeah, smoke. That's a good one. Now, did you know what kind of uh, what do they use for the smudging? Uh, I don't know. I never asked him. Ask him because that would be interesting to me. Because you know, my favorite, of course, is, is to use uh, White Mountain. Uh, so I think, because mm -hmm. hmm. there are several kinds of smudges you can use. Uh, Palo Santo. Yeah. Which, which is very good. Frankincense. Uh, frankincense. You know, there are several uh, that you can use for smudging and getting the smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see images in the smoke. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. I need to write that one down. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, that's a good one. If any of our viewers are mm -hmm. have others, you could text them to us. Um, yeah. And we'll bring them up right now. Let me check the, the see if anybody's text the question. So at 2.45 p.m., a colleague. Oops. That I didn't want. <laughs> I didn't hear. I just heard a noise. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. All right. I don't see anything on the phone number. Once again, that phone number for questions or comments is 970-921. 9582, that's a text number to text something. And I will get it over here on my phone. Okay, I have uh, one other thing now. Um, this is kind of off the wall. Uh, if you want to know, for example, that the other images or other things about you personally that would open up to being responsive uh, to a visit from a spirit animal, a spirit in the spirit world. Let's take a large sheet of paper, and I mean large sheets that you're going to get your head on it. Okay, and uh, I sometimes call this a shadow image, shadow portrait, if you will. Uh -huh. Okay. And stand in front of a light, okay, so that your image is shadow of you is put on that paper. Okay. And see it. So, okay. So, uh, try to trace that, just your head. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, and transfer that over to a folder and look to see what else transferred with it. Do you see other little images around you? You see a halo around you that's on that paper that you just drew. And if you see little images, well, what are they? Can you make them clearer when you look at it? Uh huh. Uh, there you are. That's your spirit guide talking to you. Wow. Yeah. I don't generally tell people how to do that. You don't generally tell them why? Well, because, well they get in all kinds of contortion shapes. And, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is difficult. You're just doing a shadow image. Now, if you want to go to one step further, is to take your shadow image and on that paper, uh -huh. cut it out on a piece of cardboard paper, uh huh. Two pieces. Make right. it like a book cover. Open it up. And then write whatever words inside came to you while you were doing this. Interesting. Say what words were telling you what. <laughs> oh, I thought of another one. Okay. If you're in your car, mm -hmm. you're thinking about something, you turn on the radio and hit search, and wherever mm -hmm. it stops, It'll stop on an answer. Oh, for heaven's sake. Radio, stop, answer. Scan or whatever your, whatever your uh, mm -hmm. car calls it. Mine calls it scan. I don't know, because that wouldn't work with me at all. I never turn the radio on in the car. Oh, okay. <laughs> never, have, never have, and I'll tell you why. Now, I know people love playing the radio. Like, oh, that's okay. But it's a distraction to me from my driving. I, Suzanne and I do not carry on conversations in the car while we're driving. That's probably wise. Just never have. And that's what we always taught uh, when I took driver training back in the 1990. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> uh, well, I was actually some of the, it was an experimental program out of the University of Pennsylvania on uh, teaching students driver training classes. That was the beginning of them. I was a participant. And they concentrate on your driving, no, no radio, no conversation. And that stuck all these years. And I've been driving since I was 16. <laughs> well, that's good, though. That's a good habit that stuck with you. Know, other people, it, doesn't, it isn't a distraction to them. It's, it's the common thing of the music has made before them. Yeah, but, I guess. Yeah, so. So I, I'm not bad about that. I'm just saying for me, you know, that wouldn't be a good one. But for somebody else, that worked just beautifully. 
Oh yeah. I I had a girlfriend, she would get the most amazing things. She like one time when her pet died. I can't remember what came on, but it was like right on about very same kind of animal as her pet and everything. Hmm. I can't remember now. Too bad because that was a good story. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. We'll I forget totally you. messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll forgive you on that one. Okay. Um, and uh, if that's the way people text you. Uh, have you had any? Uh, how are we pub publicizing this uh, program? Uh, I'm putting it on Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. and LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and Instagram. Okay. I'm mad at Instagram. Are you what they do? They won't let me. They won't let you? They won't even let me sign in. I've been a member for years. Two days ago, I have spent all day practically trying to get the thing straightened out because I wanted to put up a promo on one of my books. And nope, can't sign in. Well, I don't know what the problem is. So then I said, well, OK, let's open a new account. Can't do that. They wouldn't let you do that either. No, so I, I don't know why they're mad at me. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> never been really bad. Well, I'm having trouble like that with the company too. I have, I probably sent them like 20 emails now trying to get my account signed. I can't sign in. Mm -hmm. I can't either. And they're, they're wanting me to upgrade. And I'm like, I'm not going to upgrade when I can't even get your basic program to work. I can't yeah. even get into it. That, that's a real come on. I think that's almost a scam. They, that, they nasty, but that isn't what Instagram is doing. I don't know what the problem is. That somewhere something has happened in terms of my trying to connect. The wrong letter went up, wrong number or something for the password, whatever it was. And uh, I tried changing the password. And no, your time is up. You'll have to wait. <laughs> they, know enough, they know enough to send me an email, though, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh. You can always get uh -huh. one from them wanting you to upgrade. <laughs> but you can't get back in to even in, like this company. I might be interested in upgrading, but not if I can't even get in there to see if the basic program right. so you the basic the number programs as messed up as their sign-in. I don't think so. I'm looking for a little pad. I have some other places that you might want to do here. Oh, to put... Mm -hmm. To uh, promote the show, mm -hmm. I think it's well, you know, important to do that. Uh, I have just a few notepads. Just a few. <laughs> oh, How do you keep? <laughs> You're as bad as me. Yeah, so, uh, oh, this is my last book, by the way. Healing the Shaman's Way mm -hmm. using essential oils. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, and that's book four in a series. Book five is, is coming out as soon as I finish writing it. <laughs> and what's it going to be? It's on uh, vibration. Mm. Vibration, that's the biggie. Uh, I'm looking for this. There it is. Okay, you mentioned Facebook. Uh, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. How about TikTok? No, I. Okay, that's a good one. It's T I K T O K. T I K. T O K. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tumblr. Tumblr. I've never been on Tumblr. Okay, that's T U M B L R. L R, no E. No E and no I. Tumblr. Okay. How about Blogger? Blogger. Mm -hmm. that's uh, yeah, I do that one. You used to do that years ago with blogger.com. Yeah, I still do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm i getting on one called MeWe, too. Have mm -hmm. you been on there? No. Uh, the last one I have is Reddit, R-E-D-D-I-T. Okay, no, I'm not on there either. And those are all good ones. And, um, uh, of course, Twitter is now X, but that's okay. They still accept my old password. <laughs> yeah. I still call them Twitter, Twitter because it's mm -hmm. too weird. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is kind of weird, but anyway. I can't okay. think what he is thinking, that Elon I, Musk guy. I don't know either. Okay. So it's just one of those things we try to do, and then um, I try to 
impose upon friends and so on sometimes. So, you know, give me a little boost, will you? <laughs> oh, sometimes I put things on Pinterest. Uh, oh, I left that one out. And I did, have done that. I've been, been long for that, been a member on it. If any of our listeners have uh, mm -hmm. have ideas of places we should do this, mm -hmm. please text it to 970-921-9582. And please also YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Uh, I know a friend that has uh, a program on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also I do oh, right. some on Patreon too. Yes. What was that one? Patreon. Oh yeah, I forgot about Patreon. I don't know why. And they have a news feed, so we should be putting stuff on there. Mm hmm. So oh, that's good. Okay, I've got two different ones that I haven't thought about doing. The problem, here's the issue for me. Okay, I have to squeeze time in to do that. Yes, and it's time consuming. It is very time consuming uh, because I'm, you know, I don't have it all organized so I can just go zoom in, zoom out. I have to go to each one, put on what I want, you know, because each one is not going to necessarily be the same. Yes. Or the same format allowed. So it takes me a while. I looked at somebody doing that one time, and my goodness, they want such an outrageous price. I couldn't even make it or afford it. Oh, I decided I'd just have to go along the way I am because. So, so it just gets too expensive to have a whatever they call these people that do emailings and uh, do um, social media mm -hmm. social mobbing or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Anyway. I will also ask your followers to repost. I keep forgetting to do that, but yeah, re reposting is another issue that we need to. I need to work on more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could repost each other's. Mm -hmm. so, uh, do you remember my yoga teacher Susanna Mantis? You did uh -huh. on a talk show, and so nine years ago you did that. So I sent it to her today, and she said, "Oh my." <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago it was nine years ago and she said oh my god and I said you need to get busy and publish your book mm -hmm. she had a CD thing and a book and I have fallen but I can get up and she shows you how to get up and save your life because most people when they fall they don't get it isn't a heart attack it's, called, it's a problem with circulation etc so to get up even roll over but don't lay there and crawl, do whatever. So we went through all of that. We, I helped. I was one of the actors in it. That's why I remembered it. <laughs> so, Susanna, so you were and, crawling around? <laughs> yes, and how to get. And her, Susanna's mother, who was 90 at that time, was also one of the participants. And we had a professional team come in and do this, do the filming and so on. So that it actually showed you how you can survive a fall. A lot of deaths of people in their 70s and 80s are caused by falling, you know, they they go into shock. So, uh, yeah. I, I put that back up to her today. She was really surprised. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, did, I did that to her this morning. So. <laughs> okay, well, I also want to put out a call right now to anyone who's listening who would like to participate on the this is intended to be a panel. So mm -hmm. far, it's a panel of two, but we are open to having other people <laughs> participate for sure. Yeah. So let me know if you're interested in being on the panel. Okay. And the discussions evolve around healing? Yes, or any kind of shamanic, shamanic. Uh, uh, shamanic activity, because I'm kind of partial to exploration. Mm -hmm. Just shamanic exploration. Uh, through art? Through art. And also I'm so, I'm working on a lucid dreaming group where we are going to try to meet each other in our dreams. Oh, let's talk about that next time because I know nothing about it. Okay. Can you well, imagine? So, 
<laughs> I have a friend. Maybe I can get him to be on. He yeah. actually, ever since he was a child, he lucid dreams every night. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's possible. We can and so about, we can talk about ghost pipe. Ghost pipe. Yes. All yeah. kinds of stuff. Okay, helping, so lucid you, dreaming. Helping, with, helping you with your lucid dreams. Lucid dreaming will be our topic next time. How to shamanic dreaming. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for being with me today, Norm. My I appreciate pleasure, it. Julia. A lot of fun today. Yes. Every Sunday is fun. Yes. Okay. Sunday, fun day. Shalom. Namaste. <laughs> Good. What am I doing wrong? I pushed in. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I tried to shut it down. <laughs> I might have to. Okay, there we go. All right.